So I really thought I was through with this COVID-19 series here in Vietnam, but unfortunately we've had a resurgence in the pandemic over the last couple of weeks. Da Nang is the center of the resurgence. And throughout this whole pandemic situation here in Vietnam, the government's made a lot of references to war, military, lots of things to get people to unite and get behind battling this pandemic. So in this video, I thought I would share with you some war-related sites here in Ho Chi Minh City and talk a little bit more about the latest news here. So I'm outside probably one of the most historically significant sites of the 20th century here in Ho Chi Minh City. This is the Reunification Palace. This is basically where the Vietnam War ended on April 30th, 1975. On April 30th, 1975, at approximately 12 noon, North Vietnamese tanks crashed through the gates of the Independence Palace, thus ending the war. The then President of the Republic of Vietnam, the South Vietnamese government, Dung Van Minh, was waiting with his cabinet to turn over the government peacefully. He was only sworn in two days before, on April 28th, after the Vice President, Trinh Van Hung, resigned, taking over control from President Tu, who fled to Taiwan. Nicknamed Big Min for his larger-than-average frame of six feet and almost 200 pounds, he was a senior general in the Army of the Republic of Vietnam and led a coup in 1963 against the Republic's President Diem, who as a part of the action was assassinated. On the morning of April 30th, 1975, he made an announcement at 10.24 a.m. on Radio Saigon for all soldiers of the Army of the Republic of Vietnam to cease fighting. As the North Vietnamese entered the palace, Minh said, The revolution is here. You are here. We have been waiting for you so that we could turn over the government. The ranking North Vietnamese officer, Colonel Bui Tin, replied, There is no question of your transferring power. Your power has crumbled. You cannot give up what you do not have. Minh was eventually taken by Jeep to Radio Saigon a few blocks away to make the historic, unconditional surrender announcement. Now, I've walked about five minutes from the Reunification Palace and I'm outside the gate of the former residence of Big Minh. President Minh used to live behind the gate here. The home is still here today. It's owned by a private citizen. Now, on April 30th, 1975, after Minh's unconditional surrender on Radio Saigon, he reported back to the North Vietnamese. Then within a few days, he moved back into his house here, and he lived a pretty quiet life after that. He was allowed to live here until 1983 when he moved to Paris. Eventually, he moved to Pasadena, California, where he died in 2001. So currently, as of the posting of this video, Ho Chi Minh City is not on high alert. However, the bars, discos, and clubs have been closed temporarily. And mandatory mask wearing in public is now being enforced on the streets of Ho Chi Minh. As of the posting of this video, there have been a total of 883 COVID-19 cases in Vietnam, 322 of which were imported cases and 18 total deaths. All 18 fatalities had underlying medical conditions. The latest cases from the outbreak in Da Nang mostly originate from three hospitals in the area. Before July 25th, when the latest outbreak occurred in Da Nang, the country had gone 99 days without any community cases. Over my shoulder in the distance is the voice of Ho Chi Minh City people, once called the voice of Saigon or Radio Saigon. That's where those historic radio announcements took place, the ceasefire and then eventual unconditional surrender. It was also a target during the Tet Offensive. There's a memorial outside of the building to the Viet Cong that lost their lives during that battle. At around 3 a.m. January 31, 1968, Viet Cong Special Forces Team 4, made up of 11 men and two women, took over control of the Radio Saigon building. After a six-hour siege involving a company of Arvin soldiers and several M41 tanks, the remaining 8 VC detonated approximately 20 kilograms of explosives, killing themselves and destroying much of the main building.
By the way, the character that Robin Williams immortalized in the movie Good Morning Vietnam, real life DJ Adrian Cronauer, did not work for Radio Saigon. He worked, of course, for Armed Forces Radio Service. Now, I'm right in front of the Park Hyatt Saigon here in the heart of District 1. And this is where the studios were located at one point. They were in the Brinks Hotel, which was here uh, long before the Park Hyatt Saigon. Uh, it was also called the Brinks Officers Quarters. And on the ground level, they had studios for Armed Forces Radio Service. There was a bomb that was detonated here December 24th, 1964. There's a landmark to the VC that did that. Two officers were killed, oh, about 60 people were injured, and the studios were destroyed. They were rebuilt, and then from 65 to 66, Adrian Cronauer did his Don Buster show, greeted everybody every morning with Good Morning Vietnam, and the guys that filled in after him did the same thing. Now, the studios eventually moved up to the street, which is now called Nguyen Thi Minh Cai, just maybe about 10 minutes walk from where I am right now and they moved the studios up there. The compound actually is still there. It's next to the HTV Television Network Studios. And Pat Zajac, the host of Wheel of Fortune, did a one-year tour here from 1968 to 1969. Pat Zajac still has a two-year contract left on his Wheel of Fortune deal. Goes right till 2022, and the guy's 73 years old. Pretty amazing. One of his best stories was when he accidentally cut off President Nixon's speech here. He thought the speech was over, so he went back into music, found out later Nixon was still talking, so he just kept the music playing, thought it'd be better than stopping the music and bringing the speech almost finished through again. Pretty good story. By the way, I want to ask you something. Why do you think Canadians don't do well at Wheel of Fortune? Well, it's because they always say, I want to buy a vowel, eh? So once again, you have to wear masks in public in Ho Chi Minh City. If you're caught without one, you can get a fine. Now, to be perfectly honest with you, I never stopped wearing a mask. I've always had a mask on when I go out in public or if I'm in a shopping mall. Only time I wouldn't wear one is if I was sitting at a cafe having something to drink or if I was in a restaurant. But to be honest with you, I haven't really even been going out that much lately. I've been staying at home, ordering in. Very rarely I'll go out these days. and. It's not because, uh, you know, I thought that there was going to be a resurgence or I have this crystal ball and I could see that we were all going to have to start wearing masks again. I just didn't uh, think it was okay not to wear one, even though I saw people not wearing them everywhere. Uh, so that's why I've been wearing them all along, other than to do those things and maybe I'd take it off quickly if I was doing a stand-up for a video. And, um, you know, to me, it's just a way to fight the pandemic. I don't see it any other way. It's not uh, a muzzle in my eyes. I don't see it as a muzzle. Um, I just see it as protecting other people. And if they do the same thing, they're protecting me.